Welcome back to Photoshop for Photographers. And today we're going to continue toning this black and white image. And we are going to take a look at curves versus levels. So what are curves? What are levels? All right. So we'll take a look at this now. So up here in our adjustment panel, and remember, we need the adjustments, we are going to need the properties, and we are going to need layers down here. These are going to be the three most important panels that we have today. And we're going to have this image here. And don't forget, this image is available for download in the link below. Now, we have converted this image to black and white, so we can see this is our original image. This is a adjustment layer. We can turn that on and off, and this is turning it to black and white. What we need to take a look at first are the two main methods for toning images. So if we come in here, we have brightness, contrast, levels, and curves. We'll just take a look at brightness, contrast first, even though we're probably never going to use it again after this. We made a brightness, contrast, adjustment level, so we can see the level is down here on the bottom. And this is very easy. It has an auto button. Almost all of these have auto buttons so we can click auto and bam, just like that. It's going to try and tone this the best that it can. Truthfully, this didn't do a horrible job, but it did wash out this background. So one of the problems when toning is sometimes a global adjustment like we just did where it affects the whole image works great for a specific area, but it also ruins another area. In this case, we have brightness contrast. And so what this is allowing us to adjust is the brightness of the image and the contrast of the image. And that's about it. That's all it actually does. Why don't I use brightness contrast? Because I can do brightness contrast and more in both levels and curves. But I can also adjust a few other items as well as color. So we are going to turn off and just actually to make this simpler, I'm going to go ahead and delete that layer. And anytime you want to delete an layer, you can either just select it and click on the trash can or drag it to the trash can. But it has to be to the trash can in the layers palette. If you try to drag it to another trash can, it will not work. So the next one we have here is levels. And we're going to go ahead and click on adjustment levels. Now I'm going to slide this out so it's bigger and we can see it. It's going to intrude a little bit on our image, but that's okay. We want to see levels. We don't really care as much about the image. The first part thing that we see here is what's called our histogram. Our histogram is always going to look different. It is showing us where the data is in our image. This is our white point, and this is our black point. So this is the black, the shadow areas, midtones, highlights. And you can see most everything in this image is on the darker side, so that's why we see a lot of data on the darker side. We also have some little eyedroppers over here. So this first eyedropper is to set black. So if I come over here and I, I'll set black on white just so you can see what it does, that's not going to work. I'm going to hit Command Z to undo that. I'm going to set black on the black dress. Now it's, it's setting black, but it's actually making the black too dark. It's 100% black. That's sort of the issue with these is it sets 100% black. Can I go in there and change it so it doesn't set 100% black? Absolutely. But by default, they set 100% black and you, it's way too black. We don't need that to be 100% black. So Command Z, we're going to undo that. The next one is it sets a neutral gray. So if I click on her, it's going to set a neutral gray. Unfortunately, this is already black and white, so it already is a neutral gray. This is more of a color thing. It's not going to help us too much. The last one we have is to set white. So if I come over here in her face, and I set white, it's like, wow, it really brightened her up and it doesn't look good. That's why you almost never sat white. Just like black, it is pure white. It is 255, 255, 255. White with no detail. White, white, white. We do not want white, white, white. Her face has detail and a tonal value. The only time you can set white and have it work is when there's a pure blown out white where there's no detail in it. And that rarely happens inside of Photoshop. And you can see we got this funky looking curve over here because we set white in an area that doesn't have white. So the issue here on this image is there's no black, black, total black. And also there's no white. 
So setting white and black or using auto is never gonna work because it does not exist. So you will see that I almost never set black, never set white. The next step here in this histogram is we have this data. And you can see right over here in this little spot, the date, there's nothing going on up in this area. That means there's no data in these values. So we can actually, what's called optimize the histogram by sliding this over to where the data starts. When we do that, it's also brightening up our highlights, but there's no data here. And if you look right in here, the data doesn't really kind of shoot up and start until right about here. Now we're not gonna adjust that and optimize that value because I think we're okay. You don't want a tone too contrasty in the beginning, like I said, and Adobe Camera Raw. We want a sort of tone flat. We're gonna leave that to where it is. This mid number that a lot of people think is mid tones, which kind of acts like it a little bit is actually your gamma. So when you adjust this, it's actually adjusting your gamma in your image, not your mid tones but it sort of works like it. So it makes a lot of sense when people do it. We can come down here, we have a secondary slider and this secondary slider is allow us to take that black max and flatten it out. So we are flattening our image. Up here, we're adding more contrast to our image. Down here, we have highlight as well. And this is adding gray to our highlight. So it's flattening out our whites. If we wanna flatten out grays, we adjust here. If we wanna flatten out our whites, we can adjust here. So you can see there's a lot going on in this histogram that we can actually do with this image. Now that is in RGB. The amazing thing about levels and curves is not only can you tone highlights, shadows, midtones, contrast, but you can go into each specific color. Now this isn't gonna help a lot in this image because we're working in black and white. I can come in here and adjust this and you can see it's gonna add some color because if we look up here, even though we've converted this to black and white, this is actually still an RGB image. It's not showing up here right now because we're in this layer mask. So we can adjust colors. We can come in here and adjust. We can adjust cyan and red, green and magenta, blue and yellow. What you will see if there is a small color cast in an image that we can fix that inside of levels and curves, which is really helpful because we don't have to go to another one of these options, we can just do it in one single panel. And that's, I think, the reason that people really prefer either levels or curves. I think levels just in the beginning is a little bit easier because it's a slider, but I actually prefer curves because you can even do more with curves than you can levels. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go once again, we're gonna select this levels and I'm gonna delete that layer so we can go back to where we were. The next one that we have up here is curves. And do not forget, these are all available. You can come up here to layer, new adjustment layer, and go in curves or levels that way. It's just not efficient. The two most efficient are going either into the adjustment layer or coming down here to the half moon. And so this way I will go into curves and it's gonna bring me up a curves adjustment layer. Now, just like before, once again, we see that histogram with that detail. We can adjust our contrast, our shadow point. This works a little bit different in that there's only one main item. There's not that secondary kind of slider for the black and whites and the grays. The way this works is down, you're darkening your highlights, brightening your highlights. So I'm grabbing this point and I'm sliding up here. That's brightening my highlights. I could also come here and just grab that highlight slider or this slider down here for shadows. So brightening my highlights, flattening out and graying my highlights. Right here, we can lower the contrast or increase the contrast of our image. And then we have the curve, which is really cool. So if I wanna come in here and brighten up my midtones, I can come and slide this way. Now, if you slide up and your midtones are not brightening up, that means that you have the wrong setting inside of your curves panel. So what I'm gonna do is actually go up here to adjustments and go to curves and you can see right here we have show amount of light or pigment and ink pigment and ink is for cmyk we want to be in light zero to 255 so you would need to come into the curves and switch this to light so if you were going 
up and it's getting darker, you're in the wrong one. You're in pigment ink. And if you go down, it should get darker, not lighter, would be in pigment ink. Remember, we want to be in light. This is allowing us to change our midtones. But remember, this is a curve. We can add other points along the curve. So what happens if I want, do not want to affect my shadows? I can click on this curve again. It adds another point and I can drag this back down. And then I can do that in the highlights. What this curve is saying, I don't want to really affect my highlights. I want to brighten or open up my midtones. And then when I get to my shadows, I don't want to do anything anymore. That's what that curve is telling me. If you want to delete a point in the curve, the easiest way is to just click on it and hit delete and it will remove that point on that curve. And so that's how you kind of control curves inside of Photoshop. It's a wonderful, wonderful tool. And because you can set all these points, it's really helpful. Now you don't want to do these crazy curves that look like this. I mean, those are something like that's not really going to be that helpful unless you're trying to do something really extreme. Usually I only have two or three, two or at the most, maybe three points along a curve, but you don't want to get into this crazy stuff because that's going to do some wonky stuff to your image. I'm going to come down here and go to this little arrow and hit reset. That's just our little reset button in there, and that's gonna look better. So up here, we have some more stuff right here. Once again, we have those eyedroppers where we can set black, gray, and white. We have edit points to modify curve. So if we wanted to edit the points where those ones we put on there, we could click on that to help select us, but all you need to do is really click on it. The next thing that we have is a little tool, and you can actually draw to modify the curve. So I could just come in here and draw that to adjust my curve if I wanted to do that. I truthfully don't really ever use it. It's easier just to use the points. So I'm just gonna hit Command Z there and do all that stuff. The last thing we have here is this little hand with the arrows. And if you've ever used Lightroom, Lightroom has this as well, as well as Adobe Camera Raw. This is a targeted adjustment. So what this allows you to do is you kind of click on this and then you go into your image on a value that you want to change. And what we're going to do is click hold and then drag up. That's going to brighten it. So if you look over there to the right, you can see my curve, it's actually moved. And if I drag down, it's self adjusting the curve by what's called a targeted adjustment. It is working on any specific area. So I can come in here and do another curve and I can go and grab this hand, go into these darks. And let's say I want to make these darker. I can adjust that and it's gonna adjust those values like that. I can come in here and further adjust my curve if I want, but that's called targeted adjustment, and that will kind of let you adjust that stuff. Now we're gonna come in here and just hit revert, and I'm going to delete this image and eat this. So we have curves and we have levels. What I would like you to do is at this point, doing intelligent toning really isn't that important. It's learning how to make the adjustments first, then we're gonna go into the image and just kind of do some intelligent toning. I want you to make either a levels adjustment layer or a curves adjustment layer. And you should try both just for the fun of it. So you're gonna come in here and I just want you to start playing around, clicking on the buttons to see what they do. Make adjustments to see how they work. Slide this slider, slide this slider, slide this slider to start to see and understand how curves works and levels. So then you're gonna come up here to curves kind of play around with that. You can do some targeted adjustments. You need to understand how to do them. You need to understand how to adjust their curves or levels and then pick one. You do not need to know how to use both levels and curves right off the bat. They both do the same thing. You'll be quicker and much more efficient if you learn how to use one really well versus both okay. Hopefully this has been helpful. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave those below. And as always, don't forget to subscribe.